Hi, this is Gary from Tutor Transformation, and this is a 30-second Smartsheet quick tip on an introduction into automations within Smartsheet. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the automations within Smartsheet and how they can improve the efficiency with your or your team's workload by automating manual repetitive tasks such as alerting, notifying, and updating cells. Okay, so automations. Um, so how do you find them? Quite easily, obviously go File, go to Automation, and then go to either Create a Workflow or Manage a Workflow. Or if you want to select one of the popular ones, you can choose it from here. Um, so what we're going to do is just say Create a Workflow. And these are just the basics, really, in regards to what you need to set a work workflow up. So there are three elements to setting up a, uh, an automation or a workflow. One is the trigger, the second is the condition, and the third is um, the sort of action or result that you want to see from that. Um, so every um, automation needs a trigger and obviously it needs an action, uh, but it doesn't necessarily need a condition. Um, and you can obviously have multiple conditions, i.e. if a condition is true, then do this, or otherwise you can do if it's false, then do something else. So that's how you, you sort of set up automations. The types of automations available are as follows. So to an alert to alert someone. Um, so one thing is if you have a, a test project as you've got here, we'll assign to as soon as you make this a contact list, and as soon as I assign one of these items to someone, I'll assign it to myself you can see that this comes up here. Because you assigned a row in the sheet, you can now notify team members when a row gets assigned to them. So I can either enable this or, or not right now. If I say not right now and just save, and I go to automation and say manage workflows, you'll see that there's this automation that's been set up, an alert automation automatically, and this is um, disabled, so I need to enable it. And you can see now, if I just edit that, so, when rows are added or changed, any field changes, run this daily, alert someone, send a contact in the cell to this sign to. And obviously that will send me a notification saying that something's been assigned to me. So that's the sort of a default notification that comes up. So um, normally when it comes up for me, I always say not right now, and then I can go back and, and enable that automation if I want to. Okay, so just going to cover off some of the other workflows just briefly. Um, I will be doing separate videos on each of these in more detail um, so watch out for those in the coming weeks um, but we just covered the alert someone, set a reminder, it works exactly the same um, so you can actually you know if I've got a start date here I can alert someone that um, there's a pro there's an item starting or if I've got an end date here as you've got here you can sort of say, you know, seven days before, if it's not complete, then um, then obviously set a reminder of someone. Um, the next one is around, you know, assigning people to tasks. Um, so depending on the criteria within your sheet, you can actually set up a, a workflow to assign a, a person. Um, and we can sort of create one here quickly. And we can sort of say, again, so we can say when it's a date is reached or uh, rows are cha added or changed or just changed or added, we can just say when rows are added and then assign people. So assign people to be assigned to or project manager. So depending what you've got that in your sheet. Um, and then you can sort of, you know, set a, a certain person to that if you want to. So they're quite straightforward. Um, the next one is around changing a cell value. Um, so for example, I can set up a um, I can set up a automation to say if this becomes a date it becomes a date then tick this box so I can say if this is a, a, a date then make this one which will then tick that box so I can automate that process as well um, in regards to record a date um, you know depending on again your sheet you're using um, you can actually record a date for many tasks so if there's a specific task within here or if there is um, some other item that you want to record uh, that a date is finished for invoicing for example if your project is based on different phases at the end of phase one you need to um, not invoice but at the end of phase two you do need to invoice phase three you need to invoice phase four you need to invoice but phase four, uh, five you don't then obviously for phases two three and four you can actually record a date of when that was completed um, clear a cell is, is quite handy actually um, 
So what normally happens is if you record a date, so for example, if something becomes complete, I, you know, if this is ticked, then record a date. Uh, but if someone's ticked that by accident uh, and they untick it, um, you're going to be left with a date in here. So normally what I do is actually create a, for a record a date, I create a, a, a clear cell value as well. Say, um, you know, record date if this box is ticked. But if this box is unticked, i.e. someone's done it by mistake potentially, then actually clear that value in that in that cell. So that's something else you can do. A request an update is, is quite powerful. Uh, that's where instead of again, you know, constantly chasing people on the project plan saying, have you done your task, have you done your task, you can actually set up some uh, a workflow and automation to say, uh, depending on the date, you know, if it's in the past or if it's becoming due in the next seven days, you know, request an update from the person, and actually that person will get a notification or an email um, from you to sort of say, you know, request an update on what's happening on this, so they can actually update the uh, the status of, of that item. Uh, an approval workflow again is quite quite good, depending on, on your sheet again. Um, what we've used this for in the past is from an intake sheet is depending on the budget that's applied. You know, if it's under ten thousand pounds, for example, then you know the approval can happen from the head of the department. But if it's over ten thousand, then um, you need approval from uh, a director. Um, and you know, you can actually set that workflow up there with the conditions to say if it's less than ten thousand, goes to the head of the department. If it's greater than ten thousand, it needs to go to the director. So again, like I say, it's quite powerful using the condition element within the workflow creation. Um, other simple ones we have here are moving rows to another sheet and copying rows to another sheet. Um, again, um, these are quite powerful in regards to what they can do. Um, the only thing I would say is they're not reversible. So be very careful in regards to how you set these up. Normally when I do it within a sheet, I'll have a separate checkbox which is saying, so there'll be a condition in here saying, you know, if, if this item is 100% complete, but this box is also ticked, then make sure that you copy the row or move the row. Um, locking rows and unlocking rows, again, very simple, very similar. Normally, um, when an item's complete uh, within a project plan or something, you don't want anyone else to mess around with those dates or the predecessors or the duration, you can actually lock those, um, lock those rows. Um, so again, another handy element, and again, Depending on the conditions or the trigger that you use for lock a row, you know if that is no longer achieved. Again, if it's this tick box that was saying, if this is tick, then lock that row. If this is unticked, then obviously you want to unlock that row as well. So sometimes, you know, similar to the um, record a date and, and clear cell value, uh, when you use a lock row cell, I normally set up a an unlock row cell as well, just in case someone has done something by mistake. So again, that's just a very basic view in regards to automations within Smartsheet. As I mentioned previously, I'll be doing um, videos on pretty much all of these automations in more in depth, more detail to give you examples to see how they can work for you. Um, but um, automations are a great way to, to stop repetitive tasks and actually automate elements for you and for your teams uh, and to obviously uh, reduce your overall workload. So there you have it. That's a very top line overview of automations in Smartsheet. Thanks for watching and for further details on our free and paid Smartsheet training courses please visit the training and events section on our website at www.cheetahtransformation.co.uk Alternatively contact us directly on help at cheetahtransformation.co.uk to arrange a call to discuss your requirements further.